So good morning, I'm Ilaria Conti from the Florence School of Regulation. I'm here in Brussels today with uh, Klaus-Dieter Borchardt, Director at the European Commission for Internal Energy Market. Hello, and Hello. thanks for uh, your availability for this it's interview. My pleasure. <laughs> Um, we'd like to have a, a, a brief conversation with you about, of course, the future of energy markets. And in uh, your role of uh, director for the internal energy market at the European Commission, you have uh, a quite privileged uh, point of view over the development of the electricity and the gas markets, both of them. And we were used to see these uh, two sectors running in parallel in the past, whereas uh, nowadays we hear more and more the word integration. So is it really going to be the way forward and uh, what has changed in the European perspective and why? Yes, indeed. Uh, electricity and uh, the gas sector, they uh, were running and are currently still running in parallel. But um, there are good reasons for this because, uh, first of all, there was the development of each individual sector that has to be done. And here I can say that the gas sector was always a bit ahead of the electricity sector. And the reason for this is uh, uh, at least twofold, because uh, traditionally um, the gas uh, side was already very used to cross-border uh, trade and also the infrastructure uh, and the interconnection points uh, have been established much, much earlier than in an electricity sector. Electricity was always and sometimes still is in some member states seen as part of the sovereignty of the member states and the reluctance to open up the markets and the borders in electricity uh, were much, much more uh, to the forefront uh, from um, some member states than in the gas. Uh, both sectors, however, they need and needed uh, some common rules on trade, on o uh, uh, operational rules and interoperability. And this we have done with the network codes in electricity and gas. Again, gas was a bit ahead. Um, but now you're right. Uh, we are uh, um, now seeing changes. Some call it integration. Uh, that's a very strong word, I would say. I think we have to see how we can bring first the two sectors closer to find uh, interdependencies uh, and then maybe in a second step in integration. I, I see here uh, two aspects. If you look at how to make uh, electricity and gas more interdependent, for me it is through sector coupling. And sector coupling, in my understanding, is that uh, you have uh, gas and power uh, and you create energy which goes into other sectors like heating and cooling, mobility Transport. and uh, also the industry. Mm -hmm. That's one aspect and um, the key word here is power to gas. That's uh, the, the critical link that you can and the obvious link between gas and electricity. The second aspect, that gets us closer to integration of both uh, sectors, and that has to do with the future energy system. Now, in the public uh, debate, you very often hear people uh, talking about the electricity-only world. Mm. I personally do not believe in that. Uh, I do not see that uh, if you uh, take the renewables alone, uh, that the capacity of our grid is um, sufficient in order uh, to take in all the renewables necessary. What I see is that we can, under the current uh, situation, go to 50% uh, renewable share in the whole system. So how do you uh, fill the, the rest? And for me, that is the role of gas, the future role of gas. And here, in that context, if you look at the energy system as a whole, uh, the uh, electricity and the gas have a complementary uh, function. But gas in itself also has to look for its future role, which cannot be only natural gas. It also has to uh, be um, renewable gas or green gas, as it is called by others. And again, the bridge uh, uh, power to gas. 
Okay, that's that's very interesting and also reassuring at the same time that uh, this uh, integration will not mean electrification, uh, but uh, let's say um, it's good to hear that uh, you see a future for both electricity and gas, um, you know, building on these bridges that you uh, correctly uh, um, mentioned. Uh, I suppose there are also quite a few gaps though to fill. Um, so where do you see uh, the biggest ob obstacles and uh, um, especially in terms of uh, regulation? Is, this, um, is there something that we can already build on, uh, something existing, some regulatory framework or uh, are we entering a completely brand new territory for regulation? It is uh, actually very much a uh, new territory and uh, when you are discussing um, the future role of gas uh, with the sector and uh, the, the key players, they are always um, alluding to obstacles, obstacles for investments, obstacles for uh, the costs, uh, the operational costs that are too high. So they are, for instance, claiming we cannot develop uh, these um, interdependencies if uh, we are uh, under the same uh, threat of uh, levies uh, and taxes, etc. So uh, if we really want to make this link, uh, we certainly have to think about uh, the support. I'm not talking about subsidies here, but uh, really removing uh, some of the elements um, that are currently uh, on on the electricity side, so that not uh, it's an infant uh, technology, uh, and we have to uh, develop it. But the merits of this are certainly that um, in if you look at the infrastructures, we are now uh, facing uh, the problem that in electricity. We, we need to build a lot of new transmission and distribution grids, or at least strengthening it. At the same time, we have an uh, intact and uh, uh, very good uh, and performing uh, infrastructure uh, grid for gas. And uh, I do not understand people uh, saying uh, that uh, gas can only be a bridging fuel uh, for renewables, because if that is, would be true, I would have to stop immediately all public funding for uh, new yes, interconnections or uh, new uh, uh, pipelines. And therefore, uh, it is so important that we get first this narrative across that uh, gas and electricity also from the infrastructure side are uh, interconnected and we have to interconnect them. I would call it that the energy system of the future has to uh, rely also on the gas infrastructure, so the pipelines, plus the storage. And that would be, in my view, the battery of the new energy system. If you have that together, you will get the most cost-efficient uh, way uh, to do the uh, energy transition. So I cannot un uh, believe that uh, we can manage this energy transition without this uh, important role that gas and the gas infrastructure has to play uh, in this context. That's great. Thank you very much for these uh, reflections. And uh, actually you uh, uh, immediately approached another topic which was very popular last year. Last year, 2017, was a year of reflection, particularly on the future role of gas, so the future role of gas in the European energy mix, but also looking a little bit wider in the, in the global uh, uh, gas market. Um, there were some important initiatives, such as the Quo Vadis uh, study launched by the Commission uh, to look into the future uh, gas market design for Europe, um, and also others like uh, the future role of gas study launched by SEER. Um, very interesting uh, points for discussion for the stakeholders, I must say. So, um, what will uh, the new year look like? Will it also be a year of reflection or uh, are we already able to build on the points emerged thanks to these studies? Uh, are there other uh, points to be discovered? And uh, well, maybe uh, we would be grateful if you could uh, maybe list the three biggest uh, challenges you see for the European gas market in the next uh, five years. Look, we are certainly also in 2018 still in a period of reflection. Um, you 
No, certainly that uh, for electricity we have uh, put out uh, the biggest uh, legislative package uh, ever, the clean energy package, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the course of 2018 we still hope that uh, this package will be adopted and is then up for implementation. And uh, of course, uh, already last year the question was raised, and what about gas? Uh, some have taken this as a signal that we are uh, leaving gas behind, but this is not uh, the case. At some point we also talked about a mirroring exercise. Exactly, right? and uh, this mm. is still uh, a topic. Uh, what uh, we as a commission and what I personally want to pursue in the gas sector is uh, that uh, we are preparing a legislative uh, proposal also for the gas sector. And this um, uh, proposal uh, will contain mainly three chapters. The first chapter is what we call the mirroring. So we will take from the electricity reform, we will take out those elements that also are relevant for the gas sectors. Not all of uh, those, uh, uh, what we have now put for the electricity market is relevant, but some elements, also institutional elements, do we need uh, DSO, uh, uh, entity also at European level for the gas, uh, the role of Acer uh, and ENSOC uh, in the uh, procedures for new network codes or the amendment of existing ones. Uh, also some uh, retail market uh, things, consumer uh, rights, etc. These kind of things uh, will also be reflected in for the gas. So that's one block, but not the most important one. The two others I would describe as the new role of gas. Um, the second block is certainly uh, power to gas we have talked mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. uh, there uh, we need uh, to look into the obstacles that are still there, removing those and also introducing the necessary incentives in order to make this happen. Because when you look today at the power to gas, we have some pilot projects. But here we are talking about megawatts. But what we need in future, if you take 2030 as um, the, the horizon as for electricity mm -hmm. reform, uh, then we need gigawatt. Uh, so th in order to make uh, the power to gas uh, technology also usable in, at industrial uh, scale. Mm. And that is still lacking. And for that you need investments, you need uh, also uh, a business uh, a model. And we are working on that. And uh, this is the second big uh, issue. And the third chapter I see is also the development uh, more from natural gas towards renewable gases. Okay. That is also something uh, that, in my view, is absolutely necessary in, in order to give um, the gas sector a sustainable future that goes even beyond 2030 and and further. So these are uh, the three uh, big um, chapters that we need to uh, address. And therefore, in 2018, uh, I must say that um, we still need the reflection. We will now get uh, the results from the Quo Vade study, as you said. There the Commission has analyzed uh, four scenarios in very close cooperation with the stakeholders. We will see now uh, the results. I cannot promise you that uh, all what comes out of the study will be reflected in our legislative proposal. Mm -hmm. um, I'm even skeptical that this will happen because uh, in the gas market, uh, I would say that the market rules are more or less working. We have a functioning gas market and I'm very reluctant now to uh, make a big a gas change. market reform or mm -hmm. inventing a new gas target model. Mm. This is certainly not for me. So I will, and we should commonly, very thoroughly assess the results of the study and the four scenarios and then decide commonly what really should go into a legislative proposal. The, the outcome of the study will always be useful for debate and discussions, uh, but whether the time is, is ripe to go into legislation on, on these um, outcomes is another question. Uh, the, the clear examples I can give here is the tariff questions, 
of course, we, uh, it would be good to have a common uh, model for terrification. But um, I remind you of our discussions on the network code on tariffs, and it was already very, very difficult to get transparency in the system, and we are now just implementing this network code and coming then with a very um, harmonizing uh, proposal is maybe not uh, the right way to do it. Um, the same for or market right merger, time. <laughs> or the right time. <laughs> it will come at a certain moment and has to come at a certain moment. The same for market mergers. Market mergers, I truly believe, we cannot decrete from above. We have to let it grow, and for that we have to create um, the circumstance. So, reflection on this, uh, and also analyzing together uh, the potential of power to gas and other new technologies, and also developing uh, the narrative. This all will then go into 2019. And 2019 for the Commission will be a crucial year because here I want the Commission, this Commission still, to work on the legal proposal. The legal proposal will not be tabled under the Juncker Commission. It will be tabled under Next. the new Commission. We also have the European Parliament's elections in June. So we need a new uh, Parliament before we can discuss this. But this uh, legal proposal on future gas uh, market uh, will be tabled in the first semester 2020. Okay. So it will be a very early piece of legislation that the new Commission uh, and the new Commissioner, in that case, uh, will, will send to the Council and to the Parliament. So therefore, I would also appeal here to all the stakeholders to help us um, to have these uh, intensive discussions. Uh, we have, I think, uh, good material with the Quo Vadis and um, the, the study that um, CR is bringing out. Ourselves, uh, we are about to launch a new study on sector coupling, as I have uh, described uh, in mm -hmm. a few words. So all this is, is a good basis and will be a good basis for further discussions. Uh, but I also invite uh, all the associations, all the stakeholders to come forward with uh, their ideas. Uh, because one, is uh, for me, is, is very clear. If we miss the point now uh, to come forward with a new narrative for a future role of gas, we might lose uh, gas uh, in the future. And that brings me to uh, the three challenges uh, I see. The first challenge, of course, is implementation of the network codes. There is mm. absolutely no alternative. We should not only look into the future, we should also look that what we have already adopted as the law uh, needs to be implemented and uh, applied. Yeah. And here uh, I, I want to um, mention that um, ENSOC, ENSOE, ACER and the Commission have created an implementation monitoring group, IMG we call it, okay. uh, at high level. It's, uh, uh, we are meeting three, four times a year. You can also visit on all the websites, on Commission, ENSOC website for instance, uh, the development of the talks and what we are doing in this uh, monitoring group. But uh, we all agree that we will uh, take a very, very close eye on uh, the implementation uh, of uh, the network codes. And in this context, I also um, uh, support very much uh, the newest initiative from the Florence School of Regulation and ENSOC also to introduce for the network codes on gas the online training courses. Uh, very, very uh, important and useful exercise. So that is uh, the first. Uh, the second then, of course, is uh, to get the uh, preparatory work for the legislative proposal on the new gas uh, market design, if you like, uh, right. Uh, really to uh, join the forces, uh, to come forcefully speaking with one voice of the sector uh, and uh, making the broader public aware that uh, it cannot be a single electricity uh, world uh, that can deliver on the objectives uh, of sustainable, secure and affordable uh, energy. We need a dual or at least a hybrid uh, system where gas 
uh, has uh, also in future to play a role. Here we have to work very hard to get this right and to make a convincing proposal uh, for 2020. And the third element is one that again covers both uh, gas and uh, electricity and that is what the whole world is calling now digitalization. Um, the digital world will also come into the energy sector and uh, both electricity and gas, uh, maybe electricity a bit more than gas, but still uh, also gas has to look um, how to uh, use uh, uh, the digitalization uh, the best in terms of optimizing um, the network uh, uh, operations, but also in terms of data management mm -hmm. and uh, also making the link between the data management and the development of new business uh, models and business opportunities in the retail market. That is the same for gas as uh, mm. for uh, electricity in my view. So this uh, is also something which we just start now to uh, endeavor and to discuss. Uh, what it really means in concrete terms. Everybody is talking about <laughs> it, <true>. but <laughs> very few are coming forward with concrete uh, projects Process. and ideas what it really means in concrete, concrete terms. And that is also something we have to come forward very soon in order to uh, get also the framework for the digitalization right for gas and electricity. That's really great. Thank you very much for these uh, open reflections. Uh, you, you heard uh, that uh, 2018 has just started, but uh, there are so many interesting initiatives to look into, brand new territories to explore, and of course the Florence School of Regulation belonging to a, the academic world will hopefully contribute that. We would look forward to, um, to helping to come with, uh, with contribution. And I'm sure that with all the interesting topics that you just raised, uh, the response from the energy stakeholders in Europe will be uh, massive. Um, it's, uh, it's we are living exciting times, we can say that. Uh, we are at a, an important turning point. So thank you very much for, this, uh, for your availability, for your time and for this uh, very interesting point that uh, I'm sure we will keep on debating in the course of the year. Thank you very much, Mr. Borchardt. Thank you, it was my pleasure.